What's up everyone? My name is Jossi and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what's in my bag for 2021. Yes, a lot of us are working from home. I myself am a front-end developer who's working from home. I don't find myself working outside of the crib too much. However, these videos are a lot of fun solely because we get a chance to talk about the main tech, our tech essentials um, for the year or what we're starting out the year with. So I'm excited to share this video with you. Before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up. It'll help out with the algorithm a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit that notification bell so you can know right away when I release a video. With all that being said, let's get started. My everyday backpack that I've been using for about a year now is the Falco Everyday Commuter Pack by BagSmart. So they sent me this uh, about a year ago, which is when I made my first What's In My Work bag. And I've enjoyed this backpack so much that I haven't gone with any other backpack now. I do like to have two backpacks, one that's more of my like commuter, everyday carry backpack with like my laptop and other tech essentials, and also a camera backpack. But for the purposes of this video, the tech that I'm primarily gonna be talking about is going to be going inside of the everyday backpack from BagSmart. So it's a really simple design, kind of like a canvas type of material. I really enjoy the silhouette along with the like navy blue and black colorway. Has plenty of storage, can fit a 15 or 16 inch laptop. Got two pockets on the side for water bottles and that's something that is overlooked. I've had backpacks that didn't have two pockets on each side, you know, to put a V8 energy drink in one pocket and needed to put a water bottle in the other or carry my wife's water bottle in the other pocket. So that's something that I've really enjoyed. Other than that, really basic book bag. It's pretty affordable and is really durable along with having a lot of storage and able to fit a 16 inch laptop. So the first item that I want to talk about is the Surface Headphones 2. I used to use the Sony like I think WH 900 BN. Not exactly sure the name, but um, I'll link those down in the description box as well because they're a great set of headphones. Um, but I replaced those with the Surface Studio Headphones 2 and I love this headphone. Now, I will say that I think the Sony headphones that I had might have had better noise cancellation, sort of, um, and a nice feature where if you just put your hands over the ear cuffs, you can um, go back to like ambient noise so you can hear whenever someone is talking with you. However, the Surface headphones are better in every other way with really good noise canceling. In order to change the type of noise cancellation setting, all you have to do is just turn the knob on the ear cuff and it'll change the setting. But in terms of like connectivity to multiple devices, this headphone can connect quickly. It pairs quickly and it also can connect up to multiple devices. And I can switch in between devices really quickly as if it was in the same ecosystem as like my iPad and my iPhone, which it isn't because it's made by Windows and not Mac or Apple. So this is a great headphone. They feel really comfortable. I think the black colorway looks really, really good. One of the best looking headphones you can get. And in terms of Bluetooth connectivity, comfortability, and overall sound quality, great headphone. Moving on to the actual um, computer or laptop that I use, I use the Surface Book 3. Now this is a device that I've been using the past, mm, I'd say like month to a month and a half. And um, I love it. <laughs> it's not the most powerful device. However, the capabilities that it offers in terms of productivity, you know, beautiful resolution, a really nice keyboard, great battery life, and a large display, it's great when it comes to that. Now in terms of like power, I do have 32 gigs of RAM and I have two terabytes of storage. So it's plenty of power even for content creation. However, for like the price tag that it is, you can get much more powerful devices. However, if you don't need something that's like super duper powerful rendering, you know, 4K footage all the time and you more so need a device that has a lot of screen real estate, it's pretty light, really versatile in terms of how you can use it, this is a great device. I've been using the Microsoft Whiteboard app a lot. 
um, just to write down notes when I'm, you know, studying and working on different programming projects, along with thinking of content and just my overall brand for my channel, you know, just creative thoughts and brainstorming. I love this device. I've actually found myself using my iPad Pro and iPad Air a lot less. Moving on to the phone that I use and carry with me every day because I only have one phone. I'm not one of those people with two phones, um, but this is the um, iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's not the 12. I didn't get the 12 because I just didn't think it was worth it. Plus we just switched to Verizon and got this phone like a month before the 12. So there's no way I was about to spend like $500 to upgrade to that phone. And it's not really that big of a difference outside of the design and a few things here and there. Regardless, I got the black um, or space gray iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's a base model for Pro Max. Nothing special here. All right. All right. So the next device that I want to talk about that I carry all the time, especially when, you know, we go to my wife's family's house for the holidays or if I'm going to like a coffee shop to do some work or, you know, work on a side project. And that is the iPad Air. Now we do have two iPads and the reason being is because we got the first one because my wife likes to video edit and I also wanted another device to like, you know, consume media on, watch Netflix, YouTube TV, YouTube videos on, um, along with using it for more of that like creative type of work, like creating thumbnails for YouTube, which has been a great help editing pictures in Lightroom. And another thing that I got the actual iPad for, or I didn't realize I got it for this, but it's been a huge benefit to me. And that's actually uploading YouTube videos and specifically on this device because it is LTE. Now I would recommend getting the iPad Air with cellular over the iPad Pro without cellular. I can't tell any difference between this Air and the Pro. This has the six core A14 Bionic chip. It's super fast. Now, no one does any video editing on the Air. The only thing I've really done is uploading videos, simple tasks like, you know, using Nebo, which is one of my favorite apps where it's basically just a free form page for me to write down notes and create diagrams if I need to, um, along with consuming content and of course uploading YouTube videos. But uh, I've really loved this device, taking it downstairs to go work out when I do Peloton workouts, being able to be on LTE has been great. Yeah, loving the iPad Air, would highly recommend getting it. It's just helped me with productivity significantly. Let's take a moment to talk about the lens that I always bring with me. My setup is pretty minimal. I have only two lenses. I have a 90 millimeter G Master and I have a Tamron 28 to 75 F 2.8 zoom lens. Now I don't bring the 90 millimeter with me too much. Um, I usually bring the 28 to 75 with me. And the reason being is because it's like literally the most versatile lens that you can ask for. It has a F 2.8 so I can still get that really nice bokeh, especially when I zoom in to like 50 and 75 millimeters. Millimeters. It's also extremely light and 28 millimeters gives me more of a wide angle shot and I can still kind of mimic a macro shot with 75 millimeter and of course 35 and 50 give me that portrait kind of video camera angle. I know there are videos out there where people talk about if I only had one lens, it would be usually it would be like some sort of zoom lens that covers like wide angle all the way up to like telephoto, which is what this lens does. It's about $879. And if you're not like familiar with like camera gear, then that sounds like a ton of money, but for what you're getting, that's a really good price. And if I could only have one lens, it would be this one. In regards to the camera that I'm using that I carry with me um, almost everywhere I go, especially if I'm in the mood to take some pictures or know that I might get inspired based on wherever I'm going, especially like coffee shops. I like to shoot B-roll for YouTube videos or get you know some Instagram story. But uh, regardless, I'm using the Sony a7 III. I've been using this camera for, I think about two years now, and it is great. I have zero complaints outside of not having like a flip out screen, which the Sony a7S III has, you know, resolved by adding a flip out screen to that camera. That's something I'm definitely looking to upgrade to. It's just really expensive. But regardless, the a7 III is an excellent camera. Everything looks so cinematic. I know a lot of you all have been asking about what gear I use. So I have the a7 
3 that came out a few years ago paired with the Sony Tamron 28 to 75 f 2.8. This camera goes up to 120 frames per second in 1080p and up to 30 frames per second in 4K. The dynamic range is excellent along with having 10 different picture profiles based on what kind of look I'm going after for my YouTube videos. Ah, all right, so that concludes today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment down below some of your favorite items that you carry every day. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I love for you all to become a part of this amazing community of content creators, programmers, and of course the curious. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you can know right away when I release a video. And as always, stay safe and healthy and have a blessed rest of your week. I'll see you all soon. Peace.